Hey guys, Brian from Brian Bows here. How big should your Bows enclosure be? That's the question I'm going to explore today. We're going to talk about the absolute minimum you should consider as far as your Bows cage size, uh, more realistic preference, as well as a few other questions like can your Bows cage be too big and can you buy an adult size cage and keep a baby bow in that and just allow it to go up inside there or do you need a smaller cage when it's a baby? So that's today's topic so be sure to stay tuned so first off this is a question or you know a question that has a lot of opinions and there's all kinds of nasty debates that happen on social media over the same question and usually it's not very productive so I'm going to try to explore it based on my own experience here uh, you know I open I'm open to your comments so please comment below if you have any other opinions besides the ones expressed in today's video so the other thing I want to consider is this isn't about the different types of cages. I've done videos before on that, so check those out. This is just merely about the size of the cage. And I'm going to be talking basically about standard snake cages, the rectangular ones that you get from different manufacturers like Animal Plastics, Neodisha Plastics, Boa File, Boa Master, etc. But it also applies to rack systems or naturalistic type enclosures as well, or custom homemade enclosures. And so when we talk about the cage, I'm gonna be talking about the length of the cage, but typically a cage will be about as, um, twice as long as it is deep. So you might have a cage that's four feet long and then two feet deep or wide, and then you know a foot or two high, something like that, just your standard rectangular size cage. And so there's a lot of manufacturers of these cages that the cages are all pretty similar and you know they're all decent cages some of them have their pros and cons we're not going to discuss that in the video it's just specifically about the size of the cage so to start off with what is the bare minimum size well the bare minimum size would be basically be the length of the cage plus the depth or width of the cage has to be at least the length of the snake so for example here we have a six foot adult uh, amorali boa bolivian boa and so for this guy, the bare minimum you would want would be a dimensions that equal six feet. So you might have a four foot long by two foot deep cage, which is basically your standard size boa cage. So this snake, the absolute minimum you could keep the snake in, it would be a four foot by two foot cage. You can also use the same rule of thumb when you're shopping for a cage to determine the maximum size boa that you should put in it. And again, you want to take the length of the cage and the width or depth of the cage, add them up, and those should be equal to or greater than the length of the snake as an adult. So for example, a six foot by two foot cage, it adds up to eight feet. So you wouldn't want to keep anything larger than eight feet in a six foot by two foot cage. And so of course, we're ignoring the third dimension here, the height of the cage. And in general, the heights of cages are typically about the same as the uh, depth or width. In some cases, a little, not quite as much. But for example, a standard size snake cage is often a six foot by two foot by two foot. Sometimes you'll see a four foot by two foot by one foot high cage. Um, but typically the manufacturers will make these cages in different variations there might be a four foot by two foot by 12 inch high cage there might also be the same cage in 15 inch high or 18 inch high and in general if you can go for the higher cage with more room for the snake to climb it's definitely preferable it's also a lot easier to maintain if you have a cage it's only a foot high it's kind of hard to get back in there and clean so definitely an advantage to have a slightly higher cage even if it's only a few inches higher and so remember here we're talking about the absolute minimum okay and a lot of people would say that this isn't enough space um, I will say for uh, disclosure I'm keeping this guy in a four foot by two foot cage and he seems to be fine in there he this is a, a, a Amarale boa is one of the less active types of boas in my experience, they don't move around quite as much. Uh, if I were going to uh, talk about a more active boa like a Pearl Island boa, a Saboge boa, I wouldn't want to keep a six foot boa, a Saboge boa in the same cage because they just move around and climb more. They're all a lot more active. I would want to give that animal a bigger cage. So you also have to look at the 
activity level of the snake. Okay, so setting the length and width of the cage equal to the length of the snake is the bare minimum size you want, but it's always a good idea to try to give your snake a little extra space. And for that reason, you really want to consider having the length of the cage be equal to or greater than the length of your snake. So here we have a four foot adult Terahumara mountain boa, and this animal would be okay in a cage up to, or a, a cage at least four feet long. And so you could say, well, I'm gonna take the length uh, and width of the cage and add it up. I could put this snake in a three foot by one and a half foot deep cage because that equals four and a half feet and this snake is about four, four and a half feet. But it's always a good idea to give your snake a little bit extra wiggle room. And I think if you go read older books on snakes in general, that's what they recommended to use a cage, at least the length of the snake. But then it seems like in the last 20 years or so, as people tried to get more and more snakes in smaller and smaller areas, they started to try to justify that the length plus the width of the cage could be equal to the length of the snake. And it's always a good idea to err on the side of giving your snake a little bit more room whenever possible. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, it's not the same for all snakes. Some snakes are less active. Many colubrids are really active, so you would want to give them more than the length um, of their body for the length of the cage. But most boas tend to be one of the less active types of snake. So in general, they probably need a little bit less space for their length uh, as a, a similar length colubrid snake, like an indigo snake or king snake would need. And then we're also Neglecting to talk about the height of the cage, many snakes that climb, the arboreal snakes, really will like that climbing space. If you can put branches or a shelf or something for the snake to climb on, it's always a good idea to have that extra height that the snake can climb. And so you might have a cage that's, you know, two foot by four feet, but it's three feet high, something like that. You might even consider that when you're building your own cage if you have a uh, climbing species like a Pearl Island boa or uh, you know a small uh, like a call key boa something like that that they do like to climb. Okay so the sizes we've been talking about so far have been for adult snakes but a common question I get is someone is buying a young snake and they want to invest in a nice large adult enclosure can they put the baby snake in the adult size enclosure and let it grow in that enclosure or does it need a smaller enclosure as it grows before you can put it in the adult size enclosure you know you might have a, a baby boa that's like two feet long and if you put it in a six foot enclosure it might be kind of lost in there even though eventually it's going to grow into it in four or five years. And so there's really no reason why you can't keep any snake in any large size enclosure like that. So um, the enclosure itself is not what's the problem. You know, the enclosure might be really large and the snake might look like it's lost in there. But if you want to use an enclosure that's much larger than would be indicated for the snake, the important thing is to provide lots of hiding places that are confined and small and so the snake can go in these small little hiding places and feel safe. So if you have a small snake in a large cage and it's just out in the open, it's not going to feel very safe. It's going to feel very vulnerable uh, and it has nowhere to hide. However, if you put a lot of hiding places in there, the snake can just retreat to the hiding places and it will be fine. Okay, so if you want to get your large enclosure, you don't want to keep moving your snake every couple of years into a bigger enclosure and just put it into its adult enclosure as a baby, I would recommend you get lots of different hiding places. You can use uh, uh, commercially bought plastic hides. You can make your own hides out of a lot of different items. You can even use cardboard boxes you know, that need to be replaced you know, every week or so. Um, you can use cork bark hides, things like that, naturalistic type hides. I mean, there's a million different things you can use as a hide, even old flower pots, things like that. Um, just provide lots of them, provide them in the hot side of the cage and the cool side so that your small snake can go and hide in there and not feel vulnerable. And if you follow that advice, you can use any size adult 
closure for your small snake and just let it grow into that. You know, alternatively, a lot of people will get baby snakes to put them into a um, rack system in different size tubs. They might move them to a larger rack when they're a couple years old. And then ultimately when they're like four or five years old, they might go into their adult size of closure. But there's no reason you have to do that provided you provide lots of hiding places for your small snake in its large enclosure. The other thing is you might um, have difficulty finding your snake in the large enclosure. So that's another thing you might want to consider. The snake might hide in there. You might not even see where it is. Often snakes will bury themselves in the substrate. You might think your snake has escaped. So something to keep in mind if you're going to take a small snake and put it in a very large enclosure. Okay, so the last idea that I want to explore is providing your snake with a really, really large enclosure. And I often see on Facebook and the different social media, someone is new to reptiles, new to snakes, they want to get a boa, and they want to really, really do it right, so they're going to have this massive enclosure. They're basically going to convert a whole room in their house. They're going to have a waterfall install. They're going to have, you know, misting systems, all kinds of lights, you know, live plants. It's just going to be this huge rainforest um, enclosure. And so the they have this idea that the animal will feel right at home and get the ideal enclosure. They often want to brag about this. Um, it's kind of like a form of virtue signaling in a way. They want to show all of the other keepers on social media how great they are as a reptile keeper. And these uh, types of posts kind of make me chuckle because I often think about the practicality of these types of enclosures and if it's really feasible and um, if the person is really actually going to do this. And then I got to think about, you know, is this really going to have any impact on the snake? Um, compared to just being in a more standard type of enclosure. And so um, it's great to want to, you know, do this kind of thing. But, um, you know, I have to think about the types of maintenance and upkeep that some of these types of ideas would take. Um, and it just doesn't seem realistic that somebody would be able to keep up with this type of uh, enclosure. When you're talking about live plants with misting and you know, all kinds of things that potentially could be causing damage to your house if you build it right in your house. Um, another thing I wonder about is how are they going to find the snake in there? I mean, there's so many places for the snake to hide. Um, you know, it's, it's like I was talking about with putting a small snake in an adult size enclosure. This is, you know, putting a small snake or a medium snake in an entire room. So it's kind of compounding that kind of problem. And then I gotta wonder, is the snake really gonna be better off in this gigantic room size enclosure as it would be with just a regular size enclosure that's you know properly and responsibly set up? Because when you're talking about a room size enclosure, it's gonna be a lot harder to maintain as far as the temperatures. You're gonna have to spend a lot of money on heating and you know that kind of thing. It's just not not very realistic and you know, I don't think that a snake would really get that much of a benefit, of any benefit at all. Um, I think snakes are actually pretty simple creatures. You know, they just want a nice, secure spot that has their desired temperature range where they can feel safe, which usually means confined. Um, and, you know, they want to eat and they want to, you know, they want to mate when it's the breeding season. But they're not really com complicated creatures, right? So putting a snake in this massive enclosure, um, I just don't think that's really that good of an idea. Uh, you know, another thing that you often see is people have this idea that, you know, the snake is from the tropical rainforest and it needs to be in an environment with plants and waterfalls and all the other things that, you know, you have in a tropical rainforest. And it's really not true at all because these are captive born animals. They have no, inc no idea about the tropical rainforest or where their ancestors are from. And it would almost be like someone saying, well, my dog's ancestors are wolves. So my dog has to be roaming the frozen prairie, you know, hunting packs of, of uh, caribou, you know, because that's what wolves do. No, it's just not the case at all. These animals are now, they're captive animals and they don't really know anything about the rainforest and there's no reason why that's the optimal environment for them. You know, if anything, most snakes don't last that long in the rainforest. They get eaten by other animals. Another thing to consider is that snakes in the wild will often seek out 
human objects or you know non-natural types of objects to hide under. In fact, a lot of people when they go herping in the field, they go to dumps. You know, because the snakes like to hide in dumps. They like to hide under old pieces of plywood and cardboard and things like that. It attracts rats, so they have a food source. They have lots of places to hide. It's, you know, easier for them to survive there than it would be in a forest, for example. So a lot of people will go to the dumps um, when they're field herping. Some field herpers will even set out, they set up a, a kind of an artificial dump by putting down old pieces of a corrugated aluminum roofing for example or plywood or things like that and the snakes will all congregate there and they can just return there to try to find the snakes and it's a very successful technique so a snake doesn't have any idea about something is natural or it's not natural um, you know if you like to put naturalistic type things in your enclosures and that's what appeals to you by all means do it that's great it's nothing wrong with it but there's nothing inherent about a naturalistic type of item that a snake will find more attractive than a non-naturalistic item. They're just looking for a place to hide that has the desired uh, environmental criteria that I discussed earlier. So if you are thinking about putting in one of these elaborate room size naturalistic enclosures, I would encourage you to really think about the practicalities of maintaining the enclosure. And the other thing I would want you to think about is, um, it, will this limit your hobby in the future? I mean, most of us don't have a whole lot of space to devote to our reptiles. We always want more and more space, but you'll find as a reptile keeper, the limiting factor is not gonna be money or time. It's ultimately gonna be the space that you have to keep these great animals. And so if you devote your entire spare room to one animal with this massive enclosure, what is that gonna take away from you know, what you can do in the future? So you might have this small room that you could fit like six or eight really nice, decent sized reptile enclosures in. But if you convert it into one massive enclosure, then that might be it. That might be your one snake in there. Um, uh, so that might limit the number of animals you have in the future. You might say, well, I'm going to put multiple snakes in this massive enclosure. And you know, that's, an, uh, that's something you could consider. Um, you know, a lot of people are completely against cohabitation. Personally, I'm not one of them, and I've had on my list of topics to make for videos on cohabitation, so I'll probably make a video of that in the near future, my, my thoughts on that. Um, so yeah, you could consider putting more than one snake in your massive enclosure. But then you get back to some of the issues we talked about with the snakes getting lost, or maybe there might be some interaction between the snakes, which isn't ideal. Uh, so I think most people are going to be better suited if they have a small snake room, just putting a few really nice, decent sized cages in there rather than one massive, you know, naturalistic type of enclosure. But of course, that's just my opinion, which is basically worth what you paid for it. So I'd like to hear yours if you want to comment below. I hope you enjoyed the video and gave you some food for thought when thinking about your boa's enclosure size. As always, I'd love to hear your comments, so please write them below. Thank you for watching and enjoy your boas.